Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and this is part five of our vintage suitcase turned dollhouse. If you missed the first four videos, those will be linked in the pinned comment below. Today we're making the fireplace. And this fireplace has a tea light that I installed under the floor so I can access the light very easily. To make the stones, you can use peat pots, egg cartons, or paper cup trays. You just want that material that has that rough surface underneath it. You can see like here, that makes excellent stonework. And the bricks inside my fireplace are made from Sculpey clay. And as always, there are detailed timestamps in the pinned comment below. All right guys, let's get started. And like I said in the previous videos, I did not know where I was putting the fireplace and that's the reason why I didn't have the hole for the tea light cut in yet. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're watching. All right, so the base of my fireplace is all foil. So this is gonna be the front of the fireplace and I just placed it on the wall and I'm just outlining where it's gonna be sitting because that's where I'm gonna be putting my brickwork. And now I'm just going to add in some foil for the chimney. I'm just gonna hot glue this right to the wall because later on I'm gonna be adding some tacky glue all over this entire thing. So the hot glue will work for now. I'm just gonna use some clay. Now I normally don't use clay, guys. I hate using clay because I know not everybody has it. But if you don't have clay, Bentley House Minis has a great tutorial on bricks using foam board. You can also uh, make bricks out of the material that I'm going to be making the stones with. Okay, so you're not stuck for, for materials there. And I just uh, rolled out the clay and I'm just drawing in the brick lines. So I was actually looking at a picture while I did this. So I did all the horizontal lines first and then at the top I did two lines. And I'll skip a section and then two lines in line with the first ones. Skip a section, two lines. Now I'll go up to the sections that I skipped and I'll put three lines. Skip a section and then three lines. And now I'll take a pointy tool again, but it's a little bit wider. And I'm just gonna go over those lines and make them deeper so I have something to paint into. So all my lines that I just did, I'm just gonna go over those again. And then you want to find something like a bottle brush just to add the texture of the bricks and I'm just going to roll it over top the surface. And this did a great job adding the texture. And then of course you bake it at whatever temperature it tells you on the package. These are my side walls and I'm already done them. I'm going to show you how to paint them in a second. This is my floorboard here and I actually forgot I was installing a tea light and I didn't cut the hole in. So just remember that when you're doing your floorboard, if you're putting a tea light in, you probably want to cut the hole before baking it. So I just take an antique white and I'm with a thinner brush just going over those lines. I'm not worried about it hitting the bricks themselves, but I just want to get all that color inside the lines. And then I took burnt sienna and the sponge brush and I just went over the surface and I didn't have any problems of it getting in between. Like it seemed to just stay on the surface. I didn't have to worry about the lines. Now I'm taking some burnt umber and I'm just going to dab it here and there just to break up that color a little bit. And then some black to blacken out parts where the fire itself is going to be hitting the bricks. Okay, so you just have to gauge for yourself where you think that's going to be. I saw once I pre-fit my pieces that there's going to be a little bit of a gap in the back wall. So I'm just painting back there uh, with black paint. So if there is a gap, it won't be seen. And I did all the edges of my clay with black as well. And you can see how wonky it is. I was just showing how wonky that is. <laughs> And then to attach them, I'm using tacky glue in the center and hot glue around the edges uh, just to hold it in place while the tacky glue dries. And the same for the side walls. And very uneven work there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be adding on top and all around those bricks. So we're at the stage where I've added the hole and there is no point in me showing you how I did that because you would not be able to see from behind my hands <laughs> what I was doing there. So I just used a chisel and exacto knife and whatever I could to get a hole in there. And then I painted all around the edges with black paint. And now I'm adding my tea light and I just stuck it in as far as I want it to go and I'm marking it off because that's where I'm going to put a piece of twine. And I'll use E6000 to hold this twine to the tea light. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when I reach in and turn the light on and off, I don't want the tea light to be pushed upward. And I held the twine in place with masking tape until the E6000 grabbed on. And that is doing a beautiful job. I, I really enjoy being able to just turn that thing on and off from underneath the floor. All right, so we're going to come back to the fireplace in a minute, but first I'm just going to cover up all the masking tape, all the foil 
with masking tape. So all the exposed foil, chimney, and the front of the fireplace will be covered in masking tape. And once that's done, then I'm going to brush the glue over the masking tape. And I'm over that, I'm going to put a napkin. I could also use paper towel. And then over that, I will brush the glue over the entire surface. And then let that dry. And I glued in a Q-tip because I am going to be making a little pot that's going to hang off of that Q-tip. I painted that Q-tip black. And we'll come back to that in a minute. This is going to be my fireplace mantle. So the main piece is two pieces of cardboard that I sandwiched together. And I... Uh, shape the edges and I'm just going to put a little uh, piece on the front that's going to hang down so I'll attach that with hot glue and then over the entire surface I'm going to cover it with a napkin I could also use paper towel just like I showed in vi uh, previous videos okay I want this part to be wrinkle free because I'm going to paint this to look like wood And now I'm going to attach it to my fireplace. And my fireplace isn't attached yet. I just put it into position so I knew where I want that wood piece to sit. In the next clip, you're going to see it already has paint. But I decided after I was all done, I didn't really like the waviness of everything. And there was a little bit of a gap here um, after my napkin dried. I think I, I went over the glue too much, so it kind of sucked in and left a little bit of gap. So I stuck in a little piece of twine to cover that gap. And now I'm going to use textured paint over this whole piece. And textured paint is just thickening up the acrylic craft paint that you're using. You can use uh, baby powder or baking soda. I'm using baking soda. A couple things to keep in mind with that. You can't use washable paint because it becomes like a gritty mess. And after it's dry, there could be a film of sodium left on top. You'd have to paint over that. It also is scratchable, so you have to seal it in or paint over it. Okay, <laughs> so keep all those things in mind. So I put in a couple of teaspoons into a couple of tablespoons of paint there. It dries fairly fast and textured paint will hold somewhat of a shape. <laughs> like I'm running those uh, bristles over top, it will hold those lines for me. And now I'm using burnt umber. I'm just going to go over that surface. I'm going to leave a little bit of the black showing behind and let that dry. And now I'm going to use cinnamon brown and the same thing. I'm going to paint over that, but leaving a little bit of that burnt umber showing behind. Let that dry. And don't be afraid to play around with colors. You don't have to use every color I'm using here. Um, after all of that, I decided to put a little bit of burnt sienna in there just to, to give it a hint of a reddish color, just a hint. Let that dry. And now I'm gonna use a soft suede, uh, any beige will work, and a stiffer brush. And very, very, very lightly, I'm just gonna dip my tip of my brush in there and then get the majority of the paint off test it in an unseen place and then I'm just going to run it very lightly over top just to highlight those lines that I made with the textured paint. You can also do this without using textured paint of course it's going to pick up you know whatever is um, a little bit raised in your paint and that's what I want. I just want to highlight a little bit of that raised paint and then I do the same thing with black. So just dip the tip in there and then get the majority of the paint off and very lightly just go over the surface. And this will add some depth. You can also age out the sides, which I always do. Uh, age out the sides of the wood and a little bit of depth in the middle there. And as always, if you're not liking the colors that you're seeing, just let your paint set because that tone will change a little bit once it dries, okay? And because I use the textured paint, I'm gonna seal mine in. Now you don't have to do that if you painted over the textured paint, that should keep it from scratching, but I prefer to seal it in. It will keep it easier for dusting later and then I really don't have to worry about anything scratching it. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do the stonework and I'm gonna do it on this piece here first. We're gonna come back to the fireplace, but I thought it would be easier to keep it all together in this one piece. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna glue these down as just flat stones. I'm not gonna cup these at all, like I'm gonna do in my fireplace. So I just wanna go very quickly to show you how easy this can be. I'm not gonna to worry too much about fitting them. I'm just gonna get these down, try to cover up as much as the cardboard as possible. And see right here, I would have to spend a little bit more time trying to fit a piece in there. So I'm just gonna cover up part of the stone beside it. I never used to do it that way. I realize once you have everything done and painted, it actually looks really good. So it doesn't really matter if you overlap them. Okay, and I'm gonna put, put it around the sides, kind of shape it around the sides, and then I'll just cut it off flush with the cardboard. So that way I have the edge covered as well. Again, hot glue and just stick it right on there. Not worried too much about fitting it first and I can just cut it off flush with the cardboard and that just makes my job a little bit easier going around the around the edges. I used to spend a lot more time uh, with, the, with this kind of work but 
I've realized it doesn't really matter. It actually, you know, looks more natural in the end if you don't spend so much time trying, trying to fit every little tiny piece. All right, so if you use hot glue like I did, there's gonna be strands there. Easiest thing to do, get your hair dryer, turn it on hot, wait a second till it is hot, and then blow those away. They will disintegrate, okay? Because the next step is we're gonna cover this with white glue, and those little strands of hot glue get pretty annoying. It's like trying to get little hairs out. And then I take Elmer's glue all, whatever white PVA glue you have, and just brush over the entire surface. Get it into all the little nooks and crannies to make sure that the size of the stones never pop up, okay? Because there's only hot glue in the center. So the white glue is going to ensure that everything stays put, and it gives you, it seals those, um, that material in as well, because it's pretty fragile material. And then I always set mine underneath a fan to let it dry. Now that it's all dry, you can see bits of the cardboard showing behind. Now you can ahead of time paint that cardboard whatever color you want to show between your stones. Uh, for me, I'm just going to be painting in between them anyway. So I have black, granite gray, and pewter gray. So dark gray and light gray will work together really well for what I'm doing. So you don't have to have the same name, of course, just dark and light. And then I have a little bit of water there. I'm just going to dampen my brush before I dip it in the paint. It'll just help spread the paint around. On the stones uh, you don't have to do it that way either it just for me it's a time saver and it'll just help get all that uh, gray paint into all the little cracks of my stones now that that's dry I'm going to paint in between all my stones with black now for, in this video I used a brush it was a little bit too thick so I did get um, my black lines are a little bit too thick for my liking after I get this step done and the next step done I'm going to show you how I fix that okay because you don't have to do as thick a line here as I did. And like I said previously, you don't have to use black either. You can choose like a, a lighter color to do like a, a grout line. Uh, for me, I'm just going to do all black in between the stones. It'll help the stones stand out from each other and give them a lot more depth. So you can see that black lines are a little bit too thick. Uh, not so bad, but a little bit too thick. So I'm going to take the lighter gray and I'm, I'm going to brush this on so lightly. So I just got some on my brush and I took the majority off and I'm just going to very lightly go over just to kind of catch the protruding parts of the stones to highlight them. So here I'm going to fix those black lines because they're driving me a little bit batty. So uh, again, that's the darker gray and I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm just going to go around uh, different sections of those lines and just gray them out so they're not so pronounced. And never be discouraged when this sort of thing happens because it all adds character to what you're doing, okay? I actually like the fact that I had to do this because it, it added some more character. So now I'm going to redo the uh, lighter gray again, just going over. And I paid attention to the in between the stones. I got my brush in between the stones and really got that lighter gray in there. All right, so the next day I decided to add a little bit more of a cream color. So that's that antique white. And again, just dipping my brush in there and getting the majority off. I did this to the fireplace. That's why I'm showing you here. And I just lightly went over and just added a little bit of a creamier color to the stones, which I really like. And again, play around with colors of your own choice. I would suggest looking up stone fireplaces as well and see what, what things that you can come up with by looking at other fireplaces because there's so many things. I mean, this is just your basic gray stone, um, but there's many, many different things that you could do with this. And after that was done, I took some black and a little brush and I just went into some of the dips and creases of the stones just to pronounce them, give them a little bit of shadow. All right, so I have already glued in my bricks along the inside here and I just used hot glue and tacky glue. And I'm gonna be adding my stonework. And it's pretty much done the same way I just showed you in the previous clips. Um, I, I cupped them out a little bit more so that they have a little bit more depth to them. And then some hot glue around the edge, of course. And then you want to pre-fit these ones uh, to make sure that you have a good fit before you're, you're adding them around your bricks especially. Um, I just found this one you want to take a little bit more time than I showed you in the previous clips. And of course you uh, tear all the sides. You don't cut them with scissors unless you're making bricks of course. So I basically just uh, shape them with my fingers and then I'm going to pre-fit them. Okay so I just found a spot there that I like better than the other two so now I'll attach this one and again hot glue around the edge. And then I'm just going to keep doing this process until the entire piece is covered in the stonework. There are parts that I didn't add stones to, and that's the parts that are going to be up against the wall. And I did add a piece underneath just to kind of level out the fireplace itself. 
So yeah, you'll figure it out once you start doing yours. And then of course we're adding the white glue over top of that, making sure that we get in between the stones covered with the glue so those stones never pop up in the future. All right, so nothing is attached yet. I had to make the front of the fireplace, so I'm kind of piecing this together as you can see. So I'm just gonna hot glue this to the fireplace itself so it'll be one piece so I, I know when I'm adding the stones, I know exactly where to put them. So now I can take that whole thing off and I'll add stones around the bottom. All right, so now I'm gonna shape it out a little bit more and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that just by using some smaller stones. Uh, right here, I wanna round that out. So I'm just going to take one of the stones, going to dry fit it and just see how that looks. And that looks great. So let's attach that one. And now I have to even out the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing, dry fit a piece and then hot glue that into place. And it makes such a difference. <laughs> I, I really enjoy this kind of work because you can really play around with so many different designs. So there we go. I have a nice rounded shape there. So again, same process. You've got to cover all that up with the uh, white glue and then let that dry. For the wood in my fireplace, I, I just got a stick from the backyard and cut it down and then in half to make it look like chop wood. And then black paint right in the center of each of them. And then I put on some tacky glue and this is red glitter. I'm just going to sprinkle this on. I hate glitter. <laughs> Gets everywhere. Anyway, I'm going to pick that up with the glue, get that onto the stick. I want to stack my pieces of wood, but I want to have the flame showing in between them. So I just glued a piece of twine in there first and then I'm going to glue my other stick right on top of that and that will just keep them separated enough that it will get some light in between there and that will help dance off that glitter as well. And this right here is a piece of copper foil. Uh, you can use any sort of foil. I want to have that light bounce off the back because I found it was a little bit drowned out. So I'm just going to attach this with uh, tacky glue and I shaped it to the wall already and just stick it right behind there and glue it in. And you can see already that just brightened up the light quite a bit. All right, so I'm doing an edit because I forgot to show you the size of tea lights that you can get. These are both from the dollar store. I used the smaller or the shorter one in my house and in this little uh, stove that I made a couple of years ago, probably a few years ago now, uh, I'll put that link for this stove in the pinned comment below. Anyway, this is one of the tea lights. It, the battery has died. So I'm just gonna pull it out and show you uh, what I mean by removing it and changing the battery and all that. So this one I did put foil on the top so the light would bounce off of that instead of just leaving it white. So I just put a little bit of tacky glue on the top of the tea light in this and then stick the foil down. So this is actually just a candy wrapper that I'm using here and you can see it actually helps that light bounce off. And now my firewood I'm going to put a dab of glue on each end. I don't want to glue it to my tea light in case I ever have to pull the tea light out of there. So just on each end. So it's sitting on the bricks, not the tea light. Look at that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I think that copper foil makes a huge difference. Before I attach my fireplace, I'm gonna add the wire now. Remember I added the Q-tip in there and I did make a pot for this fireplace. So I need to add the wire before I glue this in. So I, I attach the wire and then I pinch it with my pliers so it doesn't slide up and down the Q-tip when I put my pot on there. So I'm just measuring out the length I need and then I um, turn this into a little hook on this end that will be easy enough to hang my pot off of. All right back to my chimney uh, I had a little gap between the mantle and the chimney itself so I just filled that with a thicker piece of twine and now I'm just going to add three stones over it and I like that but then I didn't like the stones above it so I went to tear that off and I actually tore my wallpaper <laughs> but not to fear I'm going to fix this. But first I cover the exposed foil with the masking tape and now the masking tape with the paper towel. So I did have a part of the sheet left that I used to cover the wall. So I was able to use that on the one side. And then on the other side, I didn't have a sheet large enough to cover it properly. And any sort of covering I tried to do, you could see that it was a patch. <laughs> so I cut out the smallest patch possible and that seemed to work really well. So you can see I covered that one part. Now at the top there, I'm gonna do the same thing with a tiny little cutout. And that did a great job. The tinier the piece, the better. And then I had a little tiny spot left over and I just covered that with a bit of a stone. 
All right, so my little copper pot is actually made out of foil and tape and paper towel and also two coins that I found in the UK. I found them on the sidewalk. Okay, so I told you I was going to be using some treasures that I found in my travels because it's a suitcase dollhouse. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun. So that will be coming up in the next video or two. I'm not sure what the next video is going to be just yet. But make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you won't miss the next video that I upload. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.